Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all having a lovely day. Today, what I'd like to discuss is, not really discuss, but I, what I want to ensure is that your interests are being represented properly by the people who you uh, trust to represent your interests. So in many of the states that we are lobbying in, we are trying sometimes different strategies. Some states have a broad strategy. Let's have appliances, agricultural equipment, cell phones, laptops, medical equipment, all of it in one bill. Some states may just be doing just medical equipment and try to see where that goes. And in other areas, agricultural equipment, which includes John Deere tractors, have been removed from the bill. Now, the thing that is really important to me is that you understand that in states where agricultural equipment has been removed from a right to repair bill, I think it's important to understand who's asking for it. So in certain states, the Farm Bureau themselves have requested to be removed from the bill, not us. The reason I bring this up is because if you are a rural farmer in one of these states and some guy waltzes in from New York City and hires a lobbyist to try to get a bill passed and then three months later, farmers are excluded from it, I'd be looking at that and I'd probably be wondering, hmm, yeah, it's really interesting that when this guy that's like never seen a patch of dirt in his life uh, shows up in my state that agriculture is removed from this bill. And I think one of the things that's really important to understand here is that that's not of my doing. It's actually a Farm Bureau that has specifically requested in certain states that agriculture equipment be removed from the bill. Not me, the cell phone and laptop repair person asking for that stuff to be re removed from the bill, but the Farm Bureau that's asking to be removed from it. And it's really interesting because when you just kind of, when you, when you go through some of the reasoning that is given for, for some of these actions, um, it, it doesn't really add up with regards to what I've come to learn about farmers over the past six to seven years that I've been advocating for right to repair and that I've been meeting with them. You know, I've, I've heard people say things, and I'm a little confused when I, when I hear this because it just, it's not something that I would expect to hear, that farmers often don't care or have the knowledge to repair their own equipment. The issue is having service providers. They, they don't have enough service providers, but they're, they don't, they're not really interested in doing a lot of the, the work themselves. That's pretty much the opposite of what I heard from virtually every farmer. And the reason I find this particularly surprising is because I'm hearing it from people that were seemingly paid to represent the interests of farmers. Now, one video that I went over on this channel a long time ago is from the Nebraska Farm Bureau. This is not a state that I have a lobbyist in at the moment, but they voted 176 to 1, 176 to 1, in favor of right to repair, seeking some sort of solution. Now, there was an attempt to get something done with memorandums of understanding and stuff like that, but it seems at this point in time, in January 2022, most farmers are not really happy with where that's gone doesn't really appear to have gone anywhere. It doesn't really appear to have gotten you any closer to actually being able to do anything meaningful, which I explained in this other video I'll link to down below, where we are discussing an antitrust suit against John Deere that may have a chance of getting a jury trial. Now, I have heard from people who are ranking in these organizations that one of the reasons they may want to pull back from this bill is because they want to seek their own agriculture-only bill. They want a bill that is just dedicated to them, that doesn't include everything else, because that will have a stronger chance of passing. And perhaps that's true. Maybe that is the case. There is a mild bit of skepticism that I have. And that bit of skepticism is that this may simply be a way to kick it down the road. Just kick the can down the road. Yeah, let's just wait for next year. Let's just file our own bill. Let's wait until next year. Let's wait until next year. Let's wait until next session. So that it seems like they're for it, when in reality... They're just trying to push it down the road six months, 12 months, 18 months. Make it tomorrow's problem. Kind of like a New Year's resolution to go to the gym kind of thing where, you know, you know the gym is completely empty after Valentine's Day. You know how this works. So that, that is my skepticism. And that skepticism is based on the fact that it's let's try a broad bill. Okay, never mind. Let's not do that. We're going to wait till next session to have an exclusive bill. Okay, never mind. We're going to wait till next session. Maybe let's see if we can get a memorandum of understanding to work. Just put this thing on hold. This skeptical part of me, looking at how this has gone for the past three years, kind of makes me wonder. And the reason that that skepticism is fueled to the sense that it is, is because of the language that I see used. There are no citations that I see made of surveys that point to the fact that farmers don't have the 
that don't they're not really interested in fixing their own stuff that rather the issue is a lack of service centers like that that's not something that i've really seen data for and when i see the type of language used it makes me wonder do these farm bureaus represent their constituents or do they represent somebody else i don't know i'm just asking the question because i think it's interesting that again we're in 2022 and they want to be removed from a bill and fine if if that is the case then i'm more than happy to do that but the reason i'm making this video twofold firstly if you see farm equipment removed from a bill that i'm lobbying for it's not because I'm trying to fast track my ability into getting a bill to be able to fix MacBooks faster at the expense of farmers. The second is if you are a farmer and you are a member of any organization of any type that represents your interests, I think it is really, really important that you do, uh, what is this, my, um, my stepmom, lovely woman, she is a director at a library who says on a regular basis, she says, uh, inspect what you expect. Inspect what you expect. If you expect them to be representing your interests, make sure that that's what they're doing. Not just publicly, but in private as well. What happens behind closed doors matters. It affects you. And to some extent, I believe it's important that you understand what's happening behind closed doors as well. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.